You want to learn more about the permanent residency visa to Mexico? You've come to the right video. Hey, my name's Nicholas Dembski from The Single Dad Nomad, and I'm on a mission to help people live better worldwide. One of the ways I do that is by helping people learn how they can move abroad. And in this video, I'm talking about the ways you can move to Mexico as a permanent resident. I've made some other videos about moving to Mexico, about moving there on a tourist visa, about moving there on a temporary residency visa. I'll link those videos down in the description box. Without further ado, let's get started on permanent residency to Mexico. So who is the permanent residency visa to Mexico for? Ideally, it's for people who want to live in Mexico full time. They want to make it their permanent home, but they do not have work authorization. It's also for people who want to move to Mexico, but don't want to go through the process of getting temporary residency first. Most people who get the permanent residency in Mexico are people that are retirees, investors, business professionals, scientists, technicians, and people of prominent importance in the public eye. However, those aren't the only people that can get the visa, so stick around and we'll talk more about the requirements. But first, why would you want to get the permanent residency visa to Mexico? It offers you certain benefits. You can apply for a Mexican driver's license. You can get onto their public health care programs. You might want to move there just because of the climate or the cost of living or the culture. Maybe you want to just find a way to lower your taxes every year. Whatever it is, getting the permanent residency visa also makes it so you don't have to do the border runs if you want to live in Mexico, like people might have to if they're on the tourist visa. You might want to get the permanent residency visa in Mexico if you are someone who wants to live there permanently, but still have easy access to fly back home, say to the United States or Canada. When I lived there, I was an hour away from Puerto Vallarta, so it was really easy to catch flights back to the United States when I had to. Okay, so you want this visa, here are some things to keep in mind. First of all, before you get it, you want to make sure that you have a passport with at least six months validity and a few pages open so that you can place your visa into it. Without that, they're going to deny your claim right at the appointment that you're going to set. Thankfully, if your appointment isn't successful, you can just easily reschedule it and do it again, make sure you have everything you need. So you're ready to get the permanent residency visa to Mexico, you're going to need to set an appointment with the consulate that serves your area. Since I'm from Michigan, I had to go to the consulate down in Detroit. You can just look up online which consulate will serve you. You can set an appointment online. I recommend to get there at least 15 minutes early. I actually got there about an hour early and realized I was way too early. But even if you get there 15 minutes early, still be prepared to wait as there might be people in front of you or they might be doing something else. Also a few things to keep in mind for your appointment is that make sure you have a passport with at least six months validity remaining in it with at least two pages open so they can place your visa stamp into it. Make sure that you dress nicely, that you're speaking professionally, and it might help to learn a little bit of Spanish before you go that usually puts a smile on the consulate officer's face if they know that you've actually taken the time to try to get to know their culture a little bit. And if you don't speak any Spanish, yet it might be worth it to invest in yourself a little bit. I'll put a link down to Babbel in the description box. It's a language learning software that will help you learn Spanish and you'll get a 20% off coupon if you use my link. And lastly, just make sure that you know your story when you're talking to the officer. They're going to interview with you a little bit. They want to know why you're moving there, what your intentions are, what your reasons are. So just make sure that you know what you're going to say so you're not caught off guard. And of course, at this appointment, if you are taking family members, they all have to go to the appointment with you. They can't skip the appointment and still be expected to get the visa. Of course, there are many things you need to bring to your appointment, so let's go through them real quick. You need to fill out the application form, either in English or Spanish. I'll put a link down in the description box to that. You actually have to apply in person, obviously. That's what your appointment is for. Along with your passport, you need photocopies of the page with all your personal details. You need a passport-sized photo in color, not wearing any glasses. And usually the consulates will have services for these kind of photos, so if you don't have some as you go to the appointment, they can usually do it for you. But that is going to cost you some extra money, of course. And then, of course, there are the financial requirements that Mexico is going to be looking for. Now, there are essentially two ways that you can do this. You can either show them 12 months of investing or financial records that show a minimum of $107,800 over the course of a year, or you need to show some type of retirement pension like your social security and prove that it's been coming in over the last six months at at least $2,700 per month. And lastly, the consulate fees went up this year just by a little bit. They went from $36 to $40. And again, if your appointment is not successful, you're going to have to pay that $40 anyway and then reschedule another appointment to do it again. If it is successful, they're going to issue your passport and you can come back and pick it up usually the next day or within a few days. But you're not done there. You still need to go to Mexico.
Once you actually get to Mexico with your permanent residency visa, you are still not yet guaranteed entry into Mexico. Okay, this visa does not say, yes, you can automatically get in. That's kind of up to the customs official. So again, be professional, be ready, have your story. And if you've watched this video, then you're already prepared and ready to go. Just make sure you point out to the customs official that you are coming in on your permanent residency visa, because if they mark you as coming in as a tourist, that can cancel your permanent residency visa and you'd have to start all over again. After you get into Mexico and you've been given your permanent residency visa, you're still not done yet. You still need to go make things official with the immigration office, that's INM. This can be a bit of a pain, it can be complicated, so it might be a good idea to find an agency in whatever city you land in that can help you do that. But people do get it done themselves, it just might take a little bit of time because the forms might be confusing or they might be only in Spanish or you might mishear something that one of the officials at the immigration office says. And I've just heard stories of people having to go in five, six times trying to get their residency actually solved. When if you use an agency, you might just have to go in once and they'll get it done like that. So that's everything you need to know about moving to Mexico on the permanent residency visa. If you appreciated this video, please smash that like button. Comment down below with any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be bringing more videos like this that help you live better worldwide. Peace.